Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a much requested review of the Paul Rubens Metallic Watercolor Set. This is part two of a two-part series reviewing the Paul Rubens Metallic Watercolors and also their regular watercolor set of 24, since I've received a lot of reviews for this product. These have been sold on websites like Amazon and Wish um, in the United States, but this uh, paint has been more popular in Asia. Um, I know in particular it's made in China and they offer two, uh, a larger assortment of tubes and half pans over there but I haven't seen any American uh, distribution for this except for the sets on Amazon. So we're going to take a look here. I also want to let you know that the company Lightwish sent me this for free to review after I purchased and reviewed their, um, their line of paints here called Pretty Excellent. I asked if they were similar to the Paul Rubens paints and um, they said they were and they offered me some of those sets to review as well. So I, uh, since I had requests from you guys to do it, I decided to. So the first thing I want to mention with this is that um, the packaging is really top-notch, really luxury, and it would be an excellent gift for somebody that um, does paper crafting or watercolor painting because it is such a, um, such a well-packaged, luxurious product. Um, the box that it comes in is a heavyweight chipboard box. It's got a metallic finish. Not that that really matters with the product, but that's, you know, it just makes a nice gift presentation. And then the palette itself is wrapped in a chamois, which I um, assume is for cleaning your brush off with, but I didn't do that because I didn't want to make it all gross before I showed you it. And um, it comes in a gorgeous pink tin. So um, it was it's probably kind of a risk for the company to use pink tins for all their paints um, because a lot of people would just rather have standard black, but uh, I think it's gorgeous and nice high quality thick metal. Um, and the pans don't rattle around. I didn't have to adjust anything for the pans to fit tightly. And uh, it just feels really nice and high quality. And here you can see the assortment of 24 metallic shades. Uh, there's a gorgeous assortment. There's no duplications. And um, I just think it's beautiful to look at. Uh, so, but what we really want to know is how do these perform? And I'm also going to show how these perform to other, in comparison with other products, because these are probably middle of the range price-wise. This set goes for $49. So it's not what I would consider cheap, um, but you know, there are more expensive metallic watercolors such as the Twinkling H2Os. So when you first get these, um, when you're when you're about to use these, what I recommend you do is spray them with water. Anytime you're using a metallic watercolor, you want to just spray it so that you can kind of activate the pigments. And um, I'm just going to show you the swatches I did while those soak in because we will do a little demo here. So I swatched it on um, on white paper as well, on white watercolor paper and then black paper. So here you can see what they'll look like if you're painting them on white or you're using them as part of a watercolor painting. And here you can see them on black, which I think is really pretty. Um, and it looks nice if you do kind of some stroke work or toll painting on black cardstock. Uh, and this is a Michael's uh, Recollections heavyweight cardstock. It just is so reflective and looks really pretty that way. So that's probably how I would be more likely to use them. But there's enough of the colored pigment in there for it to work on a water color painting. I would recommend them for using, <clears throat> pardon me, watercolor cards because something that you're not going to frame behind glass because once you put a metallic pigment behind glass you use uh you lose that reflectability uh which is a word i just made up i guess um it's gonna you know you need to be able to handle it and tip it to the light and to get that pretty look so if you're gonna if you're mainly painting paintings to go behind glass i wouldn't necessarily recommend this or any other um, metallic paint for your work because i've done that before and then you can't even tell i use metallic paint it's kind of a bummer um and here i used it on some embossed card stuff and I thought that was really pretty, really, very, really opaque. Um, I, to truth be told, though, for this technique for using metallic over embossed, I prefer to use like a, a water soluble uh, oil pastel, like a gelato or something like that, or Perfect Pearls or Pearl X, um, because I think it looks a little bit nicer. But this is definitely, this definitely will do in a pinch, and then you don't have a greasy um, spot that you're trying to adhere to. So that's something to consider. And then I just did a little tiny flower on a scrap and I really think that came out uh, came out really pretty. So these all come individually wrapped which I think also adds to kind of the luxury aspect. Um, definitely gives you kind of an artist quality feeling. And then I took the um, 
<clears throat> I took each wrapper, which is, it's really hard to read because all the wrappers in this set are metallic, and they had enough sticky on them. They had adhesive on the sides so that they stuck to the edges of the pans only, so they were easy to remove. I just stuck them down onto a piece of watercolor paper, and then I swatched them. Um, I also did a, another layer on the uh, left-hand side of each swatch, but when you're working with like a more opaque color like this, it really doesn't make that much of a difference, so I probably would just use them as final touches. I wouldn't try glazing with them because you're really just not going to be able to tell, I guess. Uh, and I just went over uh, a wide strip of black so you could see how it looked on black and on uh, on a white. And when it's hitting the light, there really isn't much difference because they are so opaque. Uh, but like I said before, using them on black, I think, is, um, is preferred. So I thought we'd do just a quick little demo. And I've got a piece of black cardstock here. I'm just going to grab a round brush. And when I'm using metallic pigments, I prefer to use a um, synthetic round that's a little on the stiff side. Not really stiff, but not like a really soft watercolor brush. Uh, let's see, something like this, um, well, maybe like that one, because that has the golden Taclon hairs. So this is a Menta brush, this is a uh, Wool Cornell Super Round Comfort Grip. And let's get our palette over so you can see it. So I'm just going to do kind of like my standard little um, vintage rose, and I'll look at my swatch here so I can tell what color I want. So I want the third one down. I definitely recommend making a swatch because it can be very difficult to see how your color is going to turn out in different um, different colors. I think I'll mix a little bit of this lighter pink. Now some of the colors are more um, glittery and some are more shimmery. Like That has a little bit more of a glitter to it. And they're all going to behave differently depending on you know, which kind of color they are. And this actually does come with a swatch sheet and um, the colors are printed here. So it's a little bit easier because it's hard to read that on the pans because of the metallic paper they printed on. Um, so that's a little bit easier to see what you have. Um, and I'm, I'm happy they included that with it. Uh, the rest of it's in Chinese, but they did print the, um, the names in English as well. But you can see here, see how that's glittery? All those flare colors have like a glitter color. Um, and then some are just more of like a mica sheen, and the mica sheen are going to be more opaque, and the glittery ones are going to be a little bit more sheer, like kind of like organza ribbon. So depending on the effect that you're trying to get, you know, like this one, the sheer pink, it's very glittery, <clears throat> but it, you know, it's not really, you don't see the color that much. Like you might need to go in with a little bit of this color and just kind of add it to it so that it, you know, it matches a little bit better. So that's just something to, uh, to be aware of. Let's try this bigger brush. Let's try, uh, let's see, this green in the middle I know is pretty opaque. Now, the one, the one thing that I noticed, cause because of the way I like to work with metallic paints, I tend to want to use bigger brushes. Um, like, I wanted to use a big flat when I was brushing it over my embossed cardstock, and you don't have as much room to work your, um, work your brush in the half pan, so if that's something that is um, important to you, you might just want to maybe consider getting a brush that's, or getting a, um, uh, a type of watercolor that's got a bigger, um, a bigger pan, like one of the, um, Gansy Tambes or the Prima, they have those large, uh, circular pans, but you can see, I mean, it's just really pretty. There's a lot you can do with this, um, and I think it would probably be a little bit more useful for somebody who makes cards or, um, or does, you know, three-dimensional crafts. I also think this would be really pretty if you did home decor stuff. Maybe you're doing, uh, like, an arrangement with some, with, maybe you made some clay shapes and you glued them onto a vase, or you have a clay pot and you just want to kind of glimmer it a little bit. I think these would be definitely appropriate for that. Um, they don't seem to, like, re like lift as much as dried watercolor will. They have a little bit more of a staying power. It must be whatever they have for a binder. It might be a little bit stronger than gum Arabic. But, um, but, I, but I think they're a wonderful gift type present. Um, but I have to say, to be completely honest, that you, if you just are interested in metallic paint, you probably could do better price-wise with another product. So, um, I think these are great. I think that, you know, you're paying a lot for this tin, the individual pans, and the packaging because it is really nicely packaged. But I also want to compare it to something that is a lot cheaper. So um, this is the, so I just want to make sure I keep these separate so I don't get confused. Um, keep all my Paul Rubin stuff together here in a stack and we'll compare them side by side in a second. 
out of curiosity, I decided I would try this very inexpensive set that I recently picked up. Um, this is like the Prima set. Uh, they have two 12 color sets. Uh, this is the unbranded one that I picked up at um, a big box craft store. And I think it was regular $20, but it was on sale for 50% off, which those sales happen all the time. And I paid $10 for these 24 colors. So this is 50 and this is 10. Now, as, as far as the amount of color you get in each pan, I think it's about the same. Let me just pop this out. Um, you have a larger, you have a, a larger well. It's easier to get your brush in, uh, but it is shallower than the pans here. If I just pick out a pan, it's if you see the pans are filled to the top here, and they are a little bit thicker than that. Um, and you can see here on this, the the paint really caves in. So it's probably about the same amount of paint. Um, but since you have that bigger pan, it's a little bit easier to get those bigger brushes in. So I thought this was a great deal as well. So let's look at the color selection. I do have to say that I think that the color in the Paul Rubens is a little bit nicer. It's a little bit more diverse um, than the colors here. So this is the Paul Rubens. This is the unbranded kind of um, uh, Prima Hobby Lobby version. Uh, so you can see that you've got a lot of very samey colors here, um, <clears throat> like you know, those golds are very similar. Those greens are pretty similar, depending on how you look at it. The light, you know, a lot of these look pretty similar. But let's look at the uh, on black. You can really see these are the Prima. These are the um, Paul Rubens. You can see how on black you have a lot that really show up. Just all you're seeing is the mica on some of these um, kind of unbranded Prima ones, or the ones that are, so I can't say they're just like the Primas, I think they're the exact same things as the Primas, but you know, I don't work for Prima, I don't work for the factory that makes them, but they seem to be the exact same thing. Um, so I definitely, you can definitely see a little more pigmentation and actual color in the Paul Paul Rubens set versus the, um, versus the kind of Prima unbranded type. Uh, whether that's a big issue for you, that's only, you can say that, really. Um, for for as often as I use it, I mean, I'm sure this would probably suit me fine. I do really love the packaging and I love the assortment of colors and I love that they're ready to go at a moment's notice, but I do prefer the rounder pans here for this and for a fifth of the price that you'd actually pay on sale. Uh, it's, you know, this is definitely more bang for your buck. Um, I can actually actually spritz this. Let me spritz this and I'll show you a uh, just a quick little little demo with those. Uh, so there was an original set and a pastel set. You might even have this in your stash. It's marketed to paper crafters versus artists. So that could also be why they cost less. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Now there's other types of liquid watercolor, uh, uh, metallic watercolors that you might be interested in. You can always buy them singularly if you just want a color or two. These are by Jack Richardson and these are like four dollars a pan. <clears throat> and they're pretty big, but they're not very deep. So again, it's really difficult to say how much color you're getting because the packaging can be very deceiving. So um, that's an option. You, of course, these 24 for 50, that's just a little over $2 a color. You know, you'll have to figure out what's, what is, you know, worth it for you. You can also get liquid watercolors in, uh, uh, metallic watercolors in liquid form, like these Ken Oliver liquid metal liquid metals and uh, probably the the Cadillac of liquid of uh, metallic watercolor would be the um, twinkling H2O's which are a little bit hard to find and they are a little on the pricey side uh, but that's what these look like they're in these individual little pots of color and I, I prefer something like this or this where everything is out and I can just look and see what I have and you know pick up the colors as I need them but I think they're all wonderful options it just depends on what's available to you and what your budget is and what you want to spend and how important the gorgeous packaging is so if I was going to give a gift to somebody, this is such a pretty set and it feels so luxurious and so giftable that I would, you, know, you want to give something special, I would definitely go with this. But at personal use and you don't really care about the packaging, I probably would opt for uh, these less expensive paints. Um, but then again, if you're buying the Prima branded ones, you may be paying just as much as you would for these. So, you know, to give a nicer metal tin, eh, it's up to you. You know what your needs are and you're the only one that can... Uh, they can answer that. So I'm just going to grab another piece of cardstock, paint the exact same thing with the exact same brushes, and we can compare the finished ones in a second. So let's see, how did I start it off with this little round one and I used a pink. Actually, I used kind of a reddish color. I think it was similar to this color, this coppery red. 
you can see, I mean, these are plenty opaque. And then we'll go with like a more glittery pink. Now these are all like shimmery um, and the bigger things. They're, they don't have that kind of glitter sparkle that the Paul Rubens offers, uh, which is really nice. I kind of like that more lame look that they have to them. Grab a little bit of that color too. And let's see, I did pick up a little bit of that color and add it to the dried ones. Oh yeah, I can see the difference now with just having the glitter sheen versus the mica sheen. And I'll show you that in just a second. And then we'll do um, a couple of the green leaves. And maybe I'll just pick up another green just to, for, just to see. Ooh, that's pretty. It's almost like a gold. Okay, and oh yeah, I'll dot some gold. I dotted some gold in the other one, so I'll do that on this one too. And I think it was probably more like this gold. So the, that's another thing though. The color palette is a little different. So if you had, if you had both, you would have, you know, you would have some different colors. It's more noticeable on the dry, on the dry swatches than on the, um, than on the black swatches, dry swatches more noticeable on the white swatches and on the black swatches, I mean. You can kind of see that. They're both gorgeous. I mean, seriously. Okay, so this is what I mean about, you could see how this has kind of got, you know how you have like lame fabric? It's got that kind of lame look to it. And this is less glittery, more like a shimmer, like a pearl. But I mean, they're both pretty darn similar, so it just depends on how much you're comfortable spending, what's available to you, and whether you want a metal uh, palette versus a plastic palette, because this is a, a stackable plastic palette. I would leave the lids open while you let them dry. That's one thing that I don't like about the, the Twinkling H2Os, is that if you close this up, because they screw the top screw on really tight, if you don't let that dry before you close it up, then it will mold, and, and these are kind of expensive. So, um, like, I think these are probably about $5 a little pot like this so you know you don't want to let it get moldy and gross <laughs> but some air can get into these even when they're closed so that's a pretty much uh, an overview of this product I think they're great I don't know if um if I personally would have paid $50 for this, probably not, just because I had other glitter metallics, but um, I will definitely use this, and I think the colors are gorgeous. They It does have a beautiful assortment. I find the assortment slightly nicer than the um, than the cheaper, unbranded, kind of Prima-like um, sets, but I also like the larger pan for getting my brush in that the that the Prima sets have. So it just kind of depends on um, on what your needs are. I think the, the quality of the paint is slightly better, the color selection is slightly better, um, but the price is, is substantially more. So um, you can kind of use that to guide you, and if you're looking for a gift for an artist, I'm sure they would absolutely love this. For any artist or paper crafter, I think they would just be over the moon with this because it's so cute. As long as they like the color pink because it's very, very pink. If you have any questions on this, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, happy crafting. Oh, and don't forget to check out the other video review on the Paul Rubens set. I will be comparing it to the, um, the Pretty X excellent set that I recently reviewed and uh, that way you could see if it is worth spending more than twice as much for less paint um, <laughs> with the Paul Rubens line versus the pretty excellent line. So that should be up very shortly on my channel. It's probably up already actually. And uh, till then, happy crafting!